This conference will now be recorded. Rutherford. Here. Mo. Here. Lewis. Here. Wilson. Here. Selleck. Lamar. Here. Luther. Here. Winterstein. All right. Um, in reference to the agenda, is there any additions, amendments, or anything like that? If not, can I get a motion? Um, a motion to accept as presented. Second. All right. All, all in favor. All in Aye. favor. Aye. 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 All opposed. All right. Uh, approval of prior meeting minutes. Um, did everybody get a chance to review those? And if so, are there any changes? I'll make a motion to accept as presented. Awesome. Support. Support. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Um, on to the election of officers. Now open the floor for nominations for the position of chair. I just, I got but we, well, we're doing the ones we just nominated, right? That's nominating? We have to remember we said we were going to do election of officers as according to our standard operating procedure for the committee. We were going to redo or do the election of officers in May mm -hmm. every year, and they got to be annual or we would squeak it through to another year, but it's got to be every 12 months. So to stay on cycle, we have to kind of redo what we did. Okay, so and we couldn't remember if you remember back, we couldn't accept the vice chair election. Why not? Because the we could not accept the votes that were not present. And it was a tie. Oh, that's right. Yes, because of the Open Meetings Act, you can only vote if you are inside the room. What was the flight that we had? Who were the? Yeah, we better just read. So it was oh, me as chairman. He was chairman. Tanner as vice. And Tanner was vice chair. And we didn't have any other. We were not at that point in time. Um, we kind of redid things where we didn't have a secretary or anything like that. Basically, we need a, in case he can't show up, somebody else is going to run it other than me. I'll make a motion that Don LaBar be nominated for chairman. Second, Second that. Thanks, guys. Is there any discussion on the floor? It's a great choice. He's doing a great job so far. <laughs> I've showed up. <laughs> uh, motion. And we need a vote. Oh, do we go through the full motion? All right. Yeah. Can I get a second? You got You got right. a motion and a second. We need a vote on so it. So then discussion. If there's any discussion? No one discussion. Right. No discussion. We can move to the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. So we and then now no uh, open the nominations for yeah. vice chair. A motion to nominate uh, Tanner Kostelik for vice chairman. Or any discussion? Great. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Second time Tanner's been nominated. Here's to defend himself. Um, Election Oliver lost. <laughs> and then we have to move on. So we have to open up the room to uh, the nomination of the secretary position. Oh, there is no secretary in our bylaws. So we are all set there. All right. So. Um, Moving on to operational updates from Shannon. Um, now that we have everybody's blessing on the master plan and council has approved it, we need a resolution of support from the Harbor Advisory Committee according to Eric um, for the master plan so that we can publish it officially. So in your packet, there is resolution 22-12. I would move that we uh, adopt the, this proposed the resolution. Can I second it? All right. Um, what was the number? 22? 22-12. Any discussion for this? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Motion carries. Um, discussion was just for um just letting you guys know we are in the process of getting ready i've got two brand new uh, marina techs down there uh the first one that we hired was andrew sakarski um and then three days later i or i hired todd cooter flat 
Mm -hmm. um, both of them seem like they're going to be really great workers down there. Um, we, we've got a new term now that we we call down there. Things are cooterized. He's a uh, he's uh, one of those. If if there's a way to figure it out, and J Jason cringes sometimes. I think what he's got going on down there, but he will figure out a way to kind of get us through things. Good, good. As far as just mm -hmm. step back, take a look, and it, it may not be. So, sometimes it's not like what you would consider, but he, he built a railing out of pipe and. We got a railing, you know, he he looked at the dock and he's kind of figured out something to do around the fuel docks with those spuds and stuff like that. So I think he's going to be a really great addition as far as that. Who was the first one? Uh, Andrew Saharsky. Andrew is going to be, again, just a really good worker. He's continually on the phone with me, letting me know what's going on down there. Um, so they're, they've both been doing a really good job. They're both um, ambitious and they're both... Uh, kind of go-getters and if i tell them to do something you know, or i mention <laughs> yeah it'd be really nice if that got done and all of a sudden they call me and say hey that's done what do you want us to do next and it's like i, I didn't even know we were going to do that but okay great guys you know so good um cooter is one of those people that things have to be in their place and neat and clean so i think that's a lot of what we were looking for down there so what are you, what are you what do they plan doing in the next week or so down there what's there is there a plan at the moment or right now um we're trying to get the docks ready to go. Today I had Thunder Bay Electric down there. They were working on the um, the 60 foot docks in our head pier docks, getting 50 amp service on all of those. Wow. So now when our boats go in, we've changed the plugs and everybody's got 50 amp service up and around there. Um, they were looking today to, to figure out the fiber optic system out to that dock so we can get the Wi-Fi working there. Mm -hmm. The Wi-Fi should be working shortly in the Prentice Street side of things and then inside the building also. Okay. Um, they're working on ground clean, grounds cleaned up. Probably gonna have to start mowing lawn already next week it looks like. Um, dock repairs, they've been kind of working on that. Water hopefully tomorrow morning is going to be turned back on. I'm going to have them go along and Prentice Street until we actually get the under dock system done here in the next few weeks, we're gonna turn that outside one back on, but we're gonna make certain everything's out of the water so we don't have to worry about it not being potable. And are they gonna be, um, go station to station looking for leaks? I know there's been a problem. Water leaks? Yeah. Yes, we're gonna kind of work on that. Um, but again, and again, as we go station to station, we're, we're gonna try to get those taken care of, get things tear, torn back apart and put back together. They've been working, uh, like I said, on the dock boxes. Mm -hmm. um, gonna start some power washing again here shortly, trying to get the docks cleaned up. We've got two more transient docks that we wanna hit yet, and then we wanna try to flip over to the other side mm -hmm. um, and get you guys going. The pontoon boat we think is fixed. Arlene and Rita have been working on it. Mm -hmm. um, we're hoping that's fixed, so then we're gonna be able to get down into the dock system then on the ground level and make certain the spuds and everything or not the spuds but the fenders and stuff are fixed okay and they're gonna um the electrical pedestals they're gonna clean those up you know inside and out mm -hmm. the bug. yeah because we flip those up when we um do the cleaning we actually flip them up and stuff that's the other thing thunder bay electric's going to be going through and checking all the grounding on that stuff to make certain all that's good okay. um we think we figured out a way to change some of the bulbs and some of those that are dead hmm. flip them to an led system okay so Baby steps, mm -hmm. but we're getting there. List is long. List is long. List is still six pages long. So, okay, sounds good. Operationally, a um, few of the boats are starting to go in. There was a little sailboat that went in first. Is that yours? Took it out. <laughs> <laughs> you went sailing. It was good. Sweet. That little chickadee was in, I think, first, and um, last out. I think the only other thing I'm concerned about is I have. The docks for the sailing club mm -hmm. are still in there. I'm going to have to pull those around to somewhere because I would think that set of boats is going to want to start going in. All right. Let us know where you want them and we can move them. We can move it. Okay. Your boys want to do it. I was hoping the guys could grab a hold of it and pull, at least pull it around over to the other side of the U docks. Okay. Yeah. For now, if that's okay with you guys. Yeah. Okay. If we for, and we're, we were hoping that the pontoon was ready. 
so we can move them because I'm I'm assuming that group there is going to start wanting to be in their slips pretty quick. Okay. Operationally, I have good news. The small boat harbor is full. Is it really? With the exception of the U docks, the small boat harbor is full. How many how many slips places is that? Cool. Thirty. Six. I want to say that that's 48. Wow. Excellent. Good job. As yeah, as of earlier this week, the small boat harbor is full, and there's a good chance that every slip that we have designated currently as seasonal could be full by the end of the week. So uh, way better than we hoped for yeah, awesome. this year. Um, Is there any indication why it's better this year? <laughs> Nothing, not really. Um, just um, I had five new boaters just call out of the blue, going, "Hey, do you have a slip open?" And there's more people buying boats. More people buying boats. I just had we just offloaded one at two o'clock today, coming up from Detroit. A new boater coming in. Um, another guy who said that he was coming in with a new boat. Um, people coming back into the marina that were here a few years ago and just not you know, didn't have a, for whatever reason, we're gone coming back in, um, just things like that. One concern I do have that just, uh, <laughs> we just had it come back around is still hoping we got all our seasonal boaters from last year. I missed one. <laughs> so um, dealing with that right now, but um, again, it was everything we could to get what information we did and unfortunately, I, I still missed a few uh, Englingers out there. I'm sure that I have one, two Englings, three. I'm sorry, three Englings that are registered that, so far. that are committed. I'm looking at two of them. All uh, right. Okay. We'll look into uh, that. Yeah. There's, okay. We'll look into that. And then um, is sending his in. Who? Eric Cornish. I have not seen his. He, Dr. Cornish he just emailed me yes, okay. yesterday. Yeah. And then. Um, Rumbles. Yep. Yeah, so there would be about eight more. Okay. Get you the information. Yep. So, I mean, that's, and you guys are probably going to have to be rafted this year. Okay. At this point in time. The requirements are. Mm hmm So, other than that, is there any other questions on operations? So, anything that you guys think I need to prioritize or anything? I just have a question. There's a small outbuilding on Prentice, like, Right on the water, on yeah. giant hole in the side. Yeah. What is that building for? It used to be our bubbler system in there. It's no longer in there. Currently it's empty. And I, I have respectively uh, requested of the city for it just to go bye-bye. And then I was going to ask anybody if they really wanted a shed. Mm -hmm. And then it's just gonna go away. <laughs> I've got a shed. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's the goal with that building right now is I'm hoping within the next month it's just gone. Okay. And then uh there's a row of blocks around it we're gonna bust off and we think we're gonna be able to put a picnic table on it without any issues. Perfect. Like the electrical panels and stuff like that. It's just not in use, I take it. They're not they're not in use anymore. I'm going to have I have to have that's part of requesting for it to go away is I'm gonna to have Thunder Bay Electric go in there and disconnect all the panels and everything else. Um I think that circuit has to stay, however, because I believe that's the one that runs the lights in that area. So that service is gonna to have to stay. Those transformers are gonna to have to stay. I'm debating what other boxes around that system need to stay at this point in time. I don't know what has to stay and what doesn't. We're still trying to work that out. But the 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 long short term yeah. goal there is that building is going to be gone and open up the view and the, I think a lot of those shrubs mm -hmm. are going to go too. I haven't been noticing with the weather being nicer. A lot of people are parking for extended periods in the no park zone on Prentice Street. I know we had talked about that early on, but just to bring to your attention again. It, and it so, is something here. we we actually had a discussion about this yesterday as we were standing at the security area for the cruise ship. Um, if they're in their vehicle, we can't do anything. 
Like if, the, if they're just in the vehicle period. They're parked. If they're parked in their vehicle with the vehicle off, we can't do anything because that's not technically parking. So one suggestion, and I have to get with the street administrator about that, is if we can change that sign to something else. No standing or parking? Yes, no stopping, standing, or parking. At that point in time, then they can write the tickets for it. But is that the sword we want to die on? That's just, you're just talking about that end little turnaround. Yeah, the yeah. apprentice, yeah. It gets, you know, I've seen like three it, it, lined up. It would, be, it would be less frustrating, I think, down there if it wasn't for the fact, or if you could turn, make that turn down there and get out of there if you drove down there. But yeah, I have to sit there and K-turn in order to get out of there because yeah. they're parked there. Yeah. So, I mean, that, and that's part of it is, do we want to die on that sword? Well, I think like last summer, the police would go down occasionally and just say, you know. Give them along. Yeah. And I, and they have still been doing that, but like they said, they really don't have any teeth to it other than asking the people to leave. Right. They don't have any teeth to it unless they can write a ticket and they can't write a ticket if they're sitting in the vehicle. Because then I got to believe most people would be cooperative. Most are. Yeah. Most are cooperative. I wasn't just eating a sandwich, so. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that that was, it's interesting you say it because it was actually a discussion yesterday with two of the officers. I think when that building's gone, that little shed's gone, that'll help. I think it'll yeah. open it. Yeah. Yeah, open mm -hmm. it up. yeah. Well, and like I said, as much as that shrubbery and stuff as we can get rid of there, I will. That'll help. And I think it'll be just the one space that'll be blocked by the transformers and stuff. Okay. What's the sign that you say now? No stopping or no parking. It's just no parking. And they said in order for them to write the tickets, it's got to be no stopping, standing, or parking. parking. Yes. Right, though, I don't think it's a great spot to be writing tickets. If it were. Yeah, and that's that's what I said. Do Is that the sword we want to die on? Is that the, you know, the thing we want to... We'll just have to see how it plays. I mean, maybe just let yeah. it play out and if it gets to be a huge problem, then we'll have to deal with it again. Right, and that's, like I said, the officers are aware of it. They've they've looked into it. They drive down there. They, sh they kind of scoot people along or whatever, but they said without actually having that sign up, it's really difficult to do anything mm -hmm. down in that end. And it might be if we put that sign up and they remind them that that's what that sign means, maybe it'll prevent it, but. Any other operational things? Are we, are we gonna have a couple questions on the master plan I can ask? Cause it's sort of operational. Yeah. I mean, do you want me to ask you? Yeah. Okay, people ask. Um, on the amenities, mm -hmm. um, when Rich was running a store, okay, ice, mm -hmm. okay, the captains, because, you know, basically I was gone, so it didn't matter to me, but there's a whole, you know, there's quite a few captains that leave, like, at between five and six in the morning, not necessarily charter guys, mm -hmm. that he, he, they had a, they had an open account with him, which, I mean, you can't, you know, with city runners, they can't do, but. They, Actually, we are going to have the house accounts. They had a com lock or something. Okay. That they could get ice in the morning because there's no there's no way that there was any place else. I mean, they could buy it at you know mm -hmm. BP and that, but I don't know because you have ice on here. But I know it's out on the dock, but it's only there when the dock boys are there. Right. This was at the building. Okay, and that um, it's kind of a divide and conquer now with Koshan. Um, going to be there because. He's going to have that ice cooler up there. We're going to have the ice cooler out on the docks. Right, but the time period would be we'd have to, they have to, okay. And that's, we can, it's something we can think about or discuss because, uh, again, you know, I know how things used to be. I don't know if they can continue that way just because of how we have things. Yeah. I mean, they could stop, they could stop and get it too. But I mean, that was just an amenity that was easy. Then the other was, the 20, somebody asked me what 24 hour security, is that police, is that what kind of security? The police patrolling the lot and then we had some cameras there that are going to be replaced here, we hope shortly. We do have cameras, yeah. those are gonna be replaced, the ones that, okay. 
because that was the other thing. They... There's an easier camera system now. I mean, right. 20 years ago, those were the high-end cameras. Now you can put Nest cameras up and have the same thing going on. Any other operational things? Harbor Masters report. Um, today we had our annual Harbor Masters meeting with waterways. Um, not much that's going to affect us. Just, um, there's, they're kind of modernizing waterways, how it works more than anything else. Um, last year, remember I said all of our stuff was going to sleep, slip specific as far as the DNR was concerned. As of 2024, it's now mandated. So we just took that step a year early and they worked with us to get us to that point. So now the rest of them are going to have to go to it. Um, it's not just going to be, it's how everybody's going to operate. Um, grants, we used to email all that information to Waterways. As of, I think, the next round of grants, it's all going to have to go through the DNR granting site. As far as how that is working, um, conversations today about how the actual state harbors get fuel cheaper than we can, just because of the just the sheer quantity that they can purchase. Um, there was a request by a couple of the northern more harbors to allow us the same ability to use the state purchasing contracts um with them and then it, it what it would do is actually pull our quantity in and possibly get us all a better row or amount um they were going to check into it but they they're not real confident about it if they can do that or not as far as state purchasing on that um they are short staffed right now at waterways just with the passing of paul peterson so uh we're going to end up with a new grant administrator next year so things might be just a little bit different and just take some time to get through now. Other than that, there wasn't a whole lot of other things that were effective as far as things that I think are really going to be hard for you guys or affect us here at the marina. You know, we, we made a lot of those moves already. I'm used to the DNR grant site. There was really nothing um, that I seen or heard today that was going to be a concern. Um, everybody's a little concerned about fuel prices. However, the last surveys that were done was not affecting anybody's travel plans so far. And you start looking in the marina filling up and about half the marina is having a wait list at this point in time. It's encouraging. Anyways, so other than that, that was pretty much the Harbor Master's report. Uh, one question: Do you, yes. uh, has, uh, um, Have we had any reservations on a reservation? I know we had some. We have a uh, cruise club coming in from Cincinnati in right around brown trout time, and then I've kind of warned these guys that there's a new new way of doing things. So if they want to have a spot for brown trout, they may want to get on the reservation site. So I know at least one boat did for Ladies Classic. But other than that, I it's hard for me still to see everything on Camus. Um, I have training the end of Mar May um, administratively and just user-wise. Um, the only other thing we have is might still be short a couple dock hands. So if anybody knows anybody looking even part-time, um, I've got... three or four right now is all so and most of them want to be part-time and somebody's got soccer and another kid's got baseball and yeah um <clears throat> anybody 16 and older you qualify huh? yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, you know i was actually i was actually hoping for one or two retirees because we never put an age on that one i was hoping for a couple of retirees that might want to do some of that just because that covers when our kids go back to school that would be great. I think he would be. Don would be too. Don's too busy. All right. Well, move on. Any uh, comments from the public? 
I just want you mentioned the uh, about the brown trout and get my reservation system. Are you going to offer discounted rates? I had not yet. The only rate that we talked about discounting was the launch fees for the week. Nobody's really approached on the weekly rate for being there as of yet. So yeah, they may. Typically, we would give them. A like they would give them a flat rate for the brown girl just mm -hmm. to try to entice more people to stay there and then hopefully buy a few for us. Mm -hmm. I don't remember, it, was, it wasn't super. Like if they took two days, we gave them one day free or something. Yeah. Three days, we gave them one day free. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, we haven't talked about any kind of discounts or anything like that. And I see that's on the meeting next. Right? Yeah, I mean, brown trout's going to be on the next meeting. I'm going to invite them to come. Because it's not, you know, they'd always wait till last night. Yeah. <laughs> I did have a meeting with Brown Trout probably a month ago. I don't know if I mentioned that at the last meeting, but we had a conversation about things, what was needed on the marina grounds and stuff like that. They have put in their application for the event. So I believe they got their approval last week from us. Is that the time of the meeting I can ask you about a brown trout question then, or not? Or should we do it during members' comment? I'm just asking. During member comment, that's fine. Okay, we'll wait then. <laughs> not the public. <laughs> and in our comments from the public? On the members' comments. Oh, okay, well, there's, well, two was that on the launch fee we had talked about you were trying to get with everybody and all that kind of thing. And and I don't know if the the big deal with when they had the big tournaments, what I'm talking about, big, not you know, no offense to our tournaments now, but because we don't have the hundred boats anymore that we used to have, you know, in like the super tournament and that. But the, that one walleye tournament that comes in at that time had anywhere from 80 to 110 boats. And their big concern was they're not going to fill out that paperwork the day of the tournament or, you know, the the practice day before, where they got to all stop and fill out a piece of paper and say, well, you know, what's your what's your license plate and this and that. All the other all the other communities that I talked to said that you know now it's like down by Lake Erie they're doing it. Is that the guys if they if you make them pay. They just pay ahead of time so that they can get in right away. I mean, that was rather than, you know, whether you're out of state or out of town or whatever, they're just a set flat rate. And that's what we kind of did. We did $15 for the week, and then Cassie's going to make a beautiful little brown trout pass that we'll put in their windows for the week. And then the people that have the people that have the yearly or that are still free and clean. They're, they're, they've already paid for their slip. Okay. Are there um, access for the year? Then the other thing might be a little controversial with the Brown Trout Committee, but I had two guys say that if it's so much water usage in that during the Brown Trout for the cleaning station and all that, why don't we charge the Brown Trout a fee to have the tournament? We do. We charge them $75. No, I mean like $500. And that's normal. If that's how much it's used. You know, whatever the usage is of the extra water that you got figured in. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, but a set fee, you know, $75 sounds sort of rinky thing because most of the, like most of the state docks charge anybody having a tournament nowadays. And that's, we, we went with 75. Um, that's kind of the standard for what it costs for, uh, and a lot of that is DPW time to bring everything down. Because I thought it was a lot more expensive than that. Water. The water is, I agree with that, but well, the usage is what I'm saying. Whatever, whatever they're using, you know, I mean, we started charging a little event. He's trying to cover DPW because he went back downtown. So mm -hmm. I was, uh, you know, I probably voted yes on that, but I well, and that's um, it's it's something we can discuss is upping the the tournament fees if they're using that water so much, and that's. It's something we can explore. I can take a look at it. Um, was there a big spike that week? There's a big. I mean, when you get into the summer month, that water bill might be six to eight thousand dollars. That most of that fish cleaning station. Well, it's, it's metered off, so it's just fish cleaning station plus the 
bolts, but the yep. bolts aren't using a ton of water. Well, and that meter now is just for the fish cleaning station, and I know that one is for 4,500 and 3,700. So, I mean, I was paying $8,000 in water a year there. Yeah. So this going into this next season, we'll have a better understanding of how much water usage is, is used at that cleaning station. I already know that because we paid that bill anyways. I had that information already at, at my fingertips because there were some things that I did, some some movements that I made there already that's saving us three four $4,000 on the water bill by downsizing meters and stuff like that. That's what the delay was opening the fish cleaning station as I was changing meters. So, but that's that's something we can look at is we could look at reading that meter before and after and charging them for the water usage. But this will be stuff we're going to just talk about in June then probably. We can talk about that in June. Um, I don't know if we can do it this year because it's not part of their permit, but they may offer it. We may be able to suggest it and they or they offer to pay for it. We can see. And if it leaks out to the press before. You know. Yeah, yeah it's ads. <laughs> Doesn't matter to me. I'll take them on. Did we have Shannon? Did we have any other movement with like the pride committee idea, or is this kind of are we kind of holding off on that until we get other things more situated? I was hoping to do a pride co uh, project this spring, but it's just I. Yeah. I have been overloaded with just crazy stuff. Yeah. I can't turn on the gas pumps yet because one of the gas pumps is broke <laughs> and just just stuff like that so actually trying to organize a pride thing if you guys if one of you guys wanted to pick that up and try to help me with that I would greatly appreciate it because I was hoping we could maybe do the boaters lounge this spring yeah. and get that fixed up I mean I've got some money set aside to buy the cabinets and the countertop um, again Cooter and Andy are going to work on you know the preliminary stuff trying to get some preliminary stuff done he was going to do some spackling on that roof that's cracking and stuff um but if one of you guys wanted to try to pick that up and organize it for me i just and i apologize i just you got a lot of parties to do. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of moving parts at that marina that i'm just trying to get working and for the season yeah um the wife getting the wi-fi ran out and things like that docks getting that kind of stuff getting the the renters moved in things like that it's just taken more time than i ever imagined so what did we, what did we ever decide on the keys to the bathrooms keys to the locks have been changed that is uh during the middle of the harbor masters meeting i was typing up the little note that hopefully all of you will get tonight that says hey um we did change the locks i need to know how you would like access i told the charter captains and that that I'd like them to go to card access just so we're not giving out their codes, um, things like that. So okay. um, just reminders in there to everybody, you know, you have to have your slips paid before you get in, things like that. You sent that already? Uh, no. Right. no. That's after this meeting. Okay. That's, that's future Shannon's problem. Okay. That was fine. I just, yeah. you know, okay. I was, I was working on it and then I had three phone calls, so it just didn't go out before the Harbor meeting. Okay. Case they asked. Okay. Yep. No. And that's, um, and I, we didn't turn that room on yet either because there's repairs that need to be made inside the bathroom. So the guys will hopefully be working on that this week too. Um, all, where all that Luan and stuff is pulling away from the walls, we're hoping to glue that all back down. And then we'll get the cleaning staff in there and get it cleaned and then I'll get it open. Any more comments from... I just... Uh... Make a few remarks on the uh, cruise, the Viking cruise activity that went on yesterday. Things went uh, very, very well. I think we landed uh, in town 335 people. Uh, there was four uh, last bottom boat cruises with 80, 70 to 80 people in each one. So I think that was successful. Plus they toured the the uh, Heritage Center, and there was Jeff did uh, three or four presentations there, and I think that was that was well received. We had kind of a de debriefing this morning of uh, sanctuary staff and also Nature Conservancy partners with it, and also uh, here on Pines. And things went went off really quite well. There's seven more visits this summer. There is one, the three that I have dates for are the 10th, 18th, and June 7th. 
next two what is next tuesday wow. next tuesday next wednesday june 7th there's some into september i think there's two in a row there in june i have them they're all taped to my wall so many of the excursion sorts of things are still working on there's a excursion company that's doing the work out of wisconsin and so that's a bit hit and miss but it's really gone really gone quite well uh, okay. i think it's you know i think that's going to be a real asset i don't know how we we staff it or the sanctuary staffs all the activities that go on there that's a that's a big day um one a couple things I noticed is even like in the downtown district, I, I heard how fabulous mangoes was, I think six times. One time when they were pouring one of their staff back on the tender to take her back to the uh <laughs> <laughs> she really, really enjoyed the margaritas at mangoes. <laughs> um and uh hopside, it, it sounded like across the board, seeing bags from several different stores downtown. So that was pretty exciting to see. Um the staff that you're dealing with there, Ed can probably attest to this, are just phenomenally nice and outgoing and they're all they're from all over the world. Yeah. The key, the key staff people and they're just I was just overwhelmed, really impressed with yes. how they were and self accommodating they were. And I think yes. this particular visit and I poked around with a lot of people that were on the cruise. Um this was the favorite landing so far in out of four other, I think they've stayed at five other stops. Wow. They were in Toronto and Detroit even, and I people couldn't believe how, I, I don't know how many times I heard this is a nice little town. Yeah. And I, I think they're just impressed with you know, nice little town, but a lot of things going on in a nice little town. Mm -hmm. That was, that was good. I think they, more of them, Al. I mean, that's just the start. That started back, I was working with those people. Oh, yeah. yeah. Always, you know, I know, but I agree good. with you. Danny Gallagher is a great ocean and great lady captain. He was working with that company on the development of the boats. You know, they're making that other one. I think it's the Blair. Mm -hmm. but the same. It's a mirror of this one. It'll come out next year. But there's other cruise companies even besides that. Too. The nicest thing was getting it before all the boats that I was able to plan. We're only here for six hours. Being here for a day makes a huge difference. Eventually, maybe it'll become, you know, they might do an overnight. <laughs> Well, next year there'll be 26 visits. Yes. They've already announced it. And everything's sold out for the summer. Yeah, this summer is completely sold. Um, the, we, the events coordinator was telling us that um, Viking will send out these, hey, where do you where do you think we should add cruises to their cruisers that they were or have been customers in the past? Great Lakes was by far and away the largest response of where they wanted cruises. And um, they could have sold this season's cruises five times over wow so it's the beginning it, it really is the beginning of the interesting part too was the demographics and they told us ahead of time you know, mm -hmm. the demographics were they were going to be you know fairly wealthy people but yep. for the most part looking for education mm -hmm. clients. uh the cruise ships the one that's here it's here there's more science and more technology on that vessel than anything in the world. And the new Polaris, the new one they're building, is going to be better yet. They have two submarines on it. They have, uh, of course, the tenders. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some go-fast boats of some sort. They're almost a military-style thing, that, I guess. And some um, some of the, the blow-up or the inflatable vessels. Kayaks. They have kayaks on it, too. But it's, it's um, they need in the you know I'm a young guy amongst the demographics that we talk with. I mean, <laughs> wow, yeah, it's it's amazing. A lot of canes and a uh, few walkers and uh, yep, nice. Um, but great people. I mean, very great people. Very personable people. Um, it's a nerd cruise. That's what I've referred to it as the nerdy cruise. And they, you know, the whole thing, they, they, one of the gals said that, you know, all we hope for, all we have anybody on the cruise wants is learn something new every day. Mm -hmm. it, it was fun. One other thing related to, um, I guess, the sanctuary, and I don't know the exact date, but it's, I think it's the first weekend of Brown Trout. Uh, there's a tall ship group coming here. It's not, um, it's nothing that we promote. They're promoting all their, activities themselves, um, advertising and that sort of thing. 
I think it's that opening weekend. It is, because brown trout was- I don't really know the whole, as we know more, we have to get more out. All I know is that they have the world's largest rubber duck. Oh, that's- 60 crazy. feet wide, 70 feet long, and 61 yeah. feet tall. Yeah. Might be winning the rubber duck race. And I was, I'm concerned, my concern is, is I gotta check the bridge to make certain the duck can get through. <laughs> 81 feet wide. Is it 81? Okay. That was that was my concern is I, I'm like, I think that's wide enough for the duck, but I can't remember. Because that would be really hilarious if you got here and got stuck in the bridge. See your claim the fame. That's it. Is there anything, I guess, on top of what Al just said, is there anything with the Tall Ship Festival that our committee wants to consider maybe in the next meeting or something like that about? Is there anything we could do at the marina or anything like that that can connect, the partner with CBB or DDA or what have you to try to try to connect the two things? Because that's just going to pull a lot of people down to NOAA, which is great for them. But I just don't know if there's a way to, I mean, we have all that riverfront. Well, and I, my only concern is, is that is in the middle of Brown Trout. I don't know how much more you want to try to pull into the marina while that's going on. Um, Maybe they'll just know that it's going on, they come watch the way in or drink some beer. Yep. That That would be the only thing. I, I, some fishmen we might not want to meet, but it would be Some. Yeah. All right. Well, can I get a motion? Oh, God, I forgot this line. Staff. Oh, we got this. Oh, yeah. Does staff have any comments? You're the only staff member here. Nope. No, I, I ignore you. Now you can go to the next one. Okay. Use a has been. Can I get a motion for adjournment? Mm -hmm. All right. Support. <laughs> Aye. Aye. All right. All Great. Hey, Wayne. Tap and half. And second. Next work, huh? We're out.